so we'll start in the, the session on what can you do with the Dow Jones uh, data. And if you want to get this data, is uh, is available in this website. There is uh, somebody that put in Kaggle's in Kaggle uh, platform the five years of Standard and Poor uh, uh, data. We will also access the Wikipedia because uh, the the data that we have doesn't contain any metadata, and also we will access the Wikipedia to know which are the Dow Jones stocks in there. So this is uh, how the data looks like. So you have, uh, oh, are you familiar with the stock data at all? Maybe to a s small introduction, is that uh, all the data is like, uh, you have every minute data because you have a buy and sell and you have the price of the transaction or every second or so. But the data that is made available in this uh, data set is the data at the end of the day. So in the last, uh, on the very last minute of the day, we know at which price uh, for which stock the, uh, some people buy and sold. So for instance, for this stock, the last price was $14.75. And this open means that at the beginning of the day, this was the price. High is the maximum of the day, low the minimum of the day, close is the final, and the volume is how many shares were bought or sell. No? Every time somebody buys, it's because somebody sells. So how many transactions there were in the day. And this is uh, some code to get the names from Wikipedia. So now, for instance, we know that AAPL is the symbol for Apple. And this is to get which companies belong to the Dow Jones. So for instance, we have Apple, American Express, Boeing, Catepilla, Cisco. So let's uh, massage a bit the data. So this is uh, how our data looks like. We will only use, we will disregard all the data like uh, volume, high, low, and so, and we just focus on the close. So the, the last value of the day. And we want to have the data like this. So every column will be a symbol, and we have all the dates, and we have the values at the close. This can be a lot of data, so I'm doing, for example, to get the weekly, so we have every Friday or every last business day, but you can experiment with uh, whatever you want. So you can have month or quarter or year. And let's do some, some plots. For instance, this is uh, Microsoft and Apple. This is how they fare in the last five years. If you realize it's quite difficult to compare the two because they start at different prices, because uh, the price of every stock is different because they have different number of shares and so. So something that uh, I want to do is to compare them more, uh, mean in a more meaningful way, is that I will compute this. So I subtract the start and divide by the start. So basically, I want to have a plot like this one, where it says, well, if I sell the same day I bought, I gain nothing, but how much in percentage do I gain as the time goes? So at the end here, for instance, for, the, for Microsoft, I'm close to two and a half, so it means like 250% gain in five years. It's a good deal. Eh? So which are the best and the worst performing stocks in the five year past year? So the best one was by far NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is uh, very much in the gaming industry. It's also used uh, the cards that they do for deep learning, as we discussed. And it's also useful for some cryptocurrency. So they are making a good business. And yeah, it's like a 175, no, sorry. It's like 1,007. So this is a percentage. It's, a, it's amazing. Huh? It's 
wow, 1,700%. Yep, so NVIDIA is meteorical, so, and this is the, the returns. So which would be the worst? The worst is, uh, I don't know this one, CHK, uh, we don't have any name for that, meaning that uh, possibly it went out of the standard and poor, and that's why it's not in the Wikipedia, and that's why we don't have the name. So, minus 85%. So, let's focus now in the Dow Jones, and which are the best? The best is Boeing. Who will tell, eh? Boeing. United Health Group, Microsoft, so Boeing is good. And the worst wo is uh, General Electric. IBM was also not, not very good these five years. So let's do some clustering. Uh, since we resample the data every week, for every stock we have 262 uh, samples meaning that there were like two, two 262 weeks in five years, or no? well, at least in the data set uh, we had. And let's say that we want to have eight clusters, and we're going to use k-means. So this is what we get. This is how you get it. So you do the fit to do the clustering, and doing the prediction, you get uh, the assignment. No? You get uh, which uh, stock is in every cluster. So this is what you get. I don't know if you are familiar with the companies, but maybe it's best to, to make a plot. So cluster zero. Do you have all of those? Cluster one is Apple and 3M. And you see these are kind of similar. And this one, before, looks like they are somehow different, but uh, when you compare to the other, you can see that they are not that different, because even if the behavior looks uh, different here, they are about the same interval. No? They are like uh, between minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.8, while the other, they go much uh, bigger, higher. This is a uh, United Health perform very well, so it, it deserves its own cluster, apparently. And this is uh, these four stocks. Well, Cartepilla looks very different, but for the most of the five years was in accordance, so maybe that's why it isn't there. Hondepot, Microsoft, Visa, very, very similar. And these are the stocks here. Nike and Walt Disney, nice, eh? Mm. Uh, they fare very similar together, and Boeing was spectacular in the Dow Jones. So let's run some principal component analysis, and we talked about uh, that uh, you can do, uh, you can keep adding components, and you have, uh, and the idea is that you can do compression uh, and also dimensionality reduction. So we start with 262 because we're doing weekly measurements. And if we want to keep 95% of the variance, you can instruct a uh, psychic learn to do like this. I want to keep 95 of the of the variance. Uh, we end up with three components. So we have like a three-dimensional space that represent already 96 to 6. So we don't need that much to represent this area. And to check uh, how it was, something we can do with the principal component analysis is to run forward and also to run backward to see how the reconstruction was. And this is what I, w uh, I wanted to do. So in red, you see Microsoft reconstructed from PCA, and in blue was the original one. Same thing for Apple, red reconstructed and blue the original. And to get something that went worse, I took the, uh, the worst one in the Dow Jones. This is was the General Electric. 
uh, something that I had it pending during the presentation was to plot the the components of a PCA. So it's a dimensionality reduction. So we can actually plot the these two dimensions that will explain uh, a big percentage of the variability. So in the representation, this is uh, how it looked like. So maybe let's make it this bigger. Yeah. So the axis here doesn't mean anything. So the first, the x-axis is the first principal component, and the y-axis is the second principal component. But to gain some insight, what I did is that to have a different coloring based on the performance of the five years. So you see that uh, pink is a uh, perform better and the uh, bluish is a uh, perform worse. General Electric was the, the worst, if you remember, and Boeing was the first, uh, so the, the best. So you see it's totally in the opposite direction, so it means that somehow the dimension work. And this allows us to give some intuition. You remember that Disney and Nike had a similar shape, so they are clustered together. So before we're doing the clustering with the time series, something that we can do now is do the clustering with the principal component uh, themselves. And this is what I just did. And these are the, the clusters. These are the results, which you can argue is not very di different. Before was a, a Apple and uh, 3M only. Now we have Apple, Intel, and 3M together. So that maybe makes sense, Apple and Intel. And Boeing is alone again, because it's super good, Boeing. And same thing on the port, Microsoft, Visa is there. So this, these are the eight clusters that uh, if we run for less clusters, more clusters, we get, of course, different results. And something for the fun of it that I decided to do is, what about if I do my own components? So I take the how much the return was at the middle of the five-year period and at the end of a five-year period. And this is basically what we get. The return in two and a half years and the return in five years. And it's a much less uh, condensed information because I only do two points. So this is how the data looks like for Microsoft, General Electric, and International, so for IBM. B uh, talking about returns. And we can do also clustering in this representation that uh, I just invented. And this is how the, the clustering looks like in this representation, but something that I did is that do the clustering in this representation, but then do another plot of the original returns on this representation. And we see again similar pattern happening. I think this one is working so well because we had a bull market. No, bull market means that everything is going up for extended time like a, I think it was, was eight years or so, that is the market is going up. And I thought it would be funny if I give you a piece of advice, which is that it looks like that what is performing well tend to perform well in the future. So based on this plot, I made a line. I say, hey, look, there is a line here. So this is the return like uh, in two and a half years, and this is a return in five. So if before I had 40%, uh, I would get one, so 100%. So, and here, if I had uh, 100%, maybe let's go a point, you would have between three and a half and one. So this was a good insight, but another explanation compatible with the same data is that if something goes to increase by 200, at a certain time it also increased by 100. So I don't know how much predictive power <laughs> I have on this. And so do your own research. And past performance is no guarantee of future results. 
So if you have any questions, or if you want to change something, then uh, we give another another run.